First up, this is from my friend Brightex3186. This is Oreo separation pump gun. Evidently Oreo for a while was running a promo to try to get people to come up with creative ways to separate Oreo cookies. And this guy came up with uh, quite an elaborate Oreo gun. I would call it like more like a disc gun because you could use it for more than just Oreos. But it had a top loading magazine that actually you could put the Oreos into and then it had a pump mechanism and... I mean, it was as sophisticated as any kind of a, a regular gun, even though it was made out of wood. Uh, as far as accomplishing what he set out to accomplish, uh, successfully separating the Oreo cookies, it was a total failure. But as far as a gun just to shoot Oreo cookies, I thought it was a rather novel idea, too. And it could be modified in many ways to make a, kind of a fun little toy to play with. So if you get a chance, check his video out. As usual, all the links will be down below in the description to all of the videos and all the news articles. Next up, this comes from my friend 1954 Shadow. Walmart is coming up with this idea. They haven't um, actually put it in place yet, but this is just basically an idea being kicked around of having customers actually deliver goods to um, from the Walmart store to, to the customers themselves. Um, I imagine you would have to get on some kind of a trusted list and they would have to check your background or something like that. But I'm thinking if you really want to compete with these places like Amazon and other places like that that um, give free delivery, they're talking about maybe in exchange for you dropping something on your way home. If somebody lives very close to you, you would get some kind of a discount, maybe, I don't know, 10% on your next purchase or maybe uh, so many successful deliveries you get a gift card. But I actually think it could be workable. I mean, there's nothing to say um, that somehow FedEx or UPS drivers or even the post office are some kind of magical people. I mean, even you hear accounts in the news all the time of those people stealing stuff and getting caught doing it. So I think actually if you worked out some kind of program to where you would actually check backgrounds on the people, you could actually get a really good group of trusted people going and it would save Walmart on, you know, it saved the, the gas and the having to hire employees or hire a company to do it. I, I think it actually is. If, if done right, it is a workable solution, but I would like to hear your opinion on this too. Uh, would you be okay with maybe just some stranger driving up in their car and delivering a package with you? That would be probably, I think, the one biggest concern and the biggest hurdle would not be trusting the people to deliver the packages. If you had a background check, what they could do is just say if you, uh, don't deliver the package to the address, we charge it to your credit card. But um, I'm wondering on the other end of it, do you mind other people coming up to your house and dropping off the packages, especially uh, depending on how the packages are? Maybe they'll know actually what you're buying and do you want people to know your business? That that would be the big concern, I guess, compared to a regular um, driver on delivery service. They deliver so many packages, why would they remember what they particularly deliver to your house? So anyway, down in the comments, let me know what you think about that. Um, this is one I found myself. Uh, this is from uh, part of the, it's called the Avogadro product. And this was, um, there's a prototype being built by the, let me get it right here, Australian Center for Precision Objects. What it is actually is it's supposedly the world's roundest sphere. In fact, the sphere is so round that if it was raised to the size of the earth, the largest mountain peak would be like 2.4 meters high. And the purpose of this is to get a reproducible way to produce a, a true kilogram weight. Now, if any of you, you know, if you're kind of geeky, you probably know the fact that the, the kilogram weight is an actual object that is kept um, in a little town within Paris by the, uh, uh, what is it called, the International Standards Committee, I think, or something like that. And it's basically a cylinder is what it is. And there's also, besides that cylinder, there's copies. I think there's something like six copies with the cylinder. And then every major world government is given a copy, too. In fact, I think the United States is given two copies. We have two copies of the International Standard for the Kilogram. But it is still related to an actual object rather than a concept. And I think by making the silicone sphere out of just one type of silicone, and because of the fact that silicone spaces itself so regularly they believe they could make the sphere precisely enough that somebody else in a lab could reproduce it and everybody could actually have a standard of the kilogram weight by just uh, producing it itself. It also was added uh, to Wikipedia right away. I noticed when I went over to Wikipedia and checked on the kilogram weight, they're already on this project from this Australian company that um, is doing the sphere. They've already got information about it. <clears throat> just to let you know the problem with these uh, 
international standards being something like a cylinder, even if it's made out of something like platinum iridium or something like that, is they tend to drift over time. And what you can do is you can compare it to the other copies you made and you take the copies, like our United States copy every so often goes back to the standards committee and they weigh and compare. And some of the copies are actually either gaining or losing weight. And in some cases they know why, but in some cases they have no idea why they're gaining or losing weight compared to the other standards. So if we could get an independent standard that's reproducible in any major laboratory, that would kind of be a breakthrough. But anyway, if you get a chance, check out this video. This guy actually gets to touch it and handle it. And the, uh, the raw material that they brought in to make this sphere costs 1 million euros to make. And after they do all that work into it to make it closest to a perfect sphere as possible, it's pretty much priceless. And they actually let this reporter with a glove pick it up and handle it. I don't know if I would be that brave for something that valuable, but this reporter actually got to handle it. Imagine that. That would be a that would be a once in a lifetime event for one of us that's a, a geek, especially being able to handle um, one of the world's standards of weights and measures. And next up, this is from Navy Thomas Eight. This is um, from FoxNews.com. They found another type of supernova, and this one is called a one. AX supernova. Now, I've talked about before about type 2 supernovas. I think even a little bit about type 1 supernovas. The thing that makes this different is in some of your typical supernovas that are similar to this, you have a dwarf star that is sucking the hydrogen off of a companion star. When it gets to a, a certain amount, it explodes. And they know that that's actually called the standard candle, too. And they use that to measure distances to galaxies because it always happens pretty much in the exact same way. The brightness is pretty much exactly the same at the same distance. Well, this one is a little bit different. And the main difference in this type 1AX supernova, and they call it a mini supernova. It's only about 1 100th the brightness of a standard one. And it's about 1 3rd as common. They believe the companion star is sucking off hydrogen. There's no more helium left to burn and the companion star is turned all to helium. Or did I say that right? Yeah. All the hydrogen is burned off. All that's left is helium. And the companion dwarf star is sucking off helium and using that to um, reach a certain cl critical mass until it does explode. But the thing about it is there's still some remnants of the star left, they believe. And that's the thing they don't yet understand as to why this thing becomes a mini supernova, but also some of the star is actually left intact itself. So this is something they're even going to further explore. And there's a lot more information than this in the article. So if you're into astronomy, kind of check this out. But it's kind of cool that they found a new type of supernova and they've given it a new designation. Evidently it also only occurs in younger galaxies such as our spiral galaxies. They've yet to ever see one in an elliptical galaxy which are the older ones so for some reason this just tends to happen um, in uh, newer galaxies for some reason. But if I get if I get more about that I'll check into it. And last up, um, you know before I was uh, doing a series called Guess That Gadget? Well, I'd also like to extend that out too. If you just come across or find something that's kind of gadget-like, I would like you to um, make a short video of it and just uh, talk about it. Kind of like, I guess, like a show and tell. Anyway, this is what I found myself. This is called a puck wrench. I found it in the $5 bargain bin at uh, Tractor Supply. I've also looked online and there's a green version of this made by, it's called, made by ABC Company. This has no company logo, no designation, and the little tag on, on it only says Puck Wrench and then it's a tractor supply label. So no idea who the original company that makes this. And there's also another version of this that instead of it's got a hole in the center here to stick a, uh, probably it's meant to stick a Phillips screwdriver to give you leverage. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a wrench to rebuild engines with. It's a wrench for an emergency. You take it with you, put it in your pocket or whatever, put it in your saddlebag. Um, take it on a trip if you just need something. The more improved version, I don't quite understand, but I, I think it, they kind of missed the concept. What it does is it has a little ratchet, and it's got the uh, the little square part there for sticking into sockets. But these sockets are not removable unless the newer version of it has it to where you can take these sockets off. These are all, in fact, these aren't even individual sockets. These are one molded piece inside the puck. So putting a ratchet on it, I guess possibly so you could bring other sockets along and use them, but then if you're going to bring a socket set, then do you really need this? I mean, the purpose of this is so that you don't need to carry along a whole socket set and can just get by with something. So the improved version, I don't quite understand, but if you get a chance and you have a tractor supply near you, um, look in the $5 bargain bin and you might find something like this. And as usual, if you have a gadget of your own that, you know, even if it's something obvious that somebody would know, but you just think it's a cool gadget, send me the video. I would really like to put it on TDD Report. So anyway, that was it for this week. You guys take care. I will catch you next week.